Okay, guys, uh, I guess you heard the news. Um, the Kerbal High Command is not at all happy with the way this has been going. So uh, they are watching me very closely, and I really need to have a successful mission. Uh, they were so unhappy, actually, that they went back and took that satellite, uh, that space station, out of orbit that we had already put up there and uh, put up a new core. So this is our new ship, and I'm recording this in post-commentary here so that uh, you know people will... I'll have a bit more, a bit easier time just talking about what's going on without feeling stressed about having to um, to uh, play the game and talk at the same time. So this is my new design. This is the the sort of uh, new saddle, uh, space station extension here that uh, we're putting in. And I'm uh, I have already done a test flight on this and realized that the uh, the uh, the uh, external tanks here were actually a little too wobbly and making things unstable so um, strutting that up a little bit more uh, now I really need this to go well uh, they, they they talked about how the uh, they were actually going to uh, replace me with Jeb which you know hey Jeb's a nice guy that's a nice choice but uh, you know I I want to do this you know I I came all the way from Earth to Kerbin in order to make this happen so uh, we're gonna go ahead and launch here, and this uh, this rocket is a little slow to launch, but uh, what you'll see is that it's it's pretty stable, um, and uh, it actually uh, is fairly well designed, I have to say, uh, for the most part. There's a couple of issues that we'll see pop up here in a, in a little bit, but um, you know, it's if you look at the uh, the nav ball there, you can see it's very stable. Not as stable as I would like. I would like it to be sort of rock solid, but it's it's not quite there. Um, you know, uh, the thing about Kerbin, the, the, the Kerbal High Command, is that uh, they don't really care about the money that much. They'll let you send up as many ships as you want, but you, you need to get some results or else they're not going to be happy. Um, you know, they, they want nice, smooth mis missions and uh, good results. So uh, we're turning over here. And you can see that uh, we're making a, a good bit of progress here. All right, so the station core that I'm uh, loading up here has a, a habitat section here and a couple of uh, small fuel tanks. And uh, you'll notice a sort of, uh, I don't even know what you call those, sort of a, a docking adapter down there that uh, you can connect a lot of different things to. Uh, I'm going to try to have one of those on each piece uh, so I can have a lot of flexibility and I'm never stuck. But you can see my uh, my uh, first stage here, those external tanks are about to, uh, about to run out. Now what I did was I had a fuel line feeding into the big tank so that when I let go of those, the, uh, the big tank will actually have uh, a full tank of fuel. So we're about ready to drop those guys off, and I had to put separatrons on there for those as well, because if I didn't do that, 
then uh, those uh, those rockets would uh, basically hit the, uh, the smaller, the bigger rocket and blow up everything up. All right, so like that. Um, yeah, Kerbal High Command is not going to be happy about that. We're gonna we're gonna try this again, uh, and uh, that was before I put the separatrons on, and that was one of the separatrons. So I'm looking around for it now. I found it. It's on the back side, but I, I don't think it's super important. I mean, it, I can show it to you right here. It's it's down, down right there. I'm pointing to it right now. <sighs> you know, Kerbal High Command has been on my ass for weeks now. It's like, uh, you know, I, and they keep saying, you know, hey, we, we just want a, a space station in orbit. And I'm like, hey, I can do that. Um, but maybe I overstated my qualifications. Um, but they made me Kerbal Commander, like, immediately. Like, there wasn't even any discussion about it. Um, they just all sort of smiled and, uh, you know. And, you know, don't worry. They, they The Kerbals really only understand, like, every third word that I'm saying. Uh, they said something about I have an accent. I don't know about that. But, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm not worried about talking openly about what's going on um, you know because it, it took a while to get to uh, get to, to Kerbin from Earth uh, you know and it's a, it's, a, it's a commute guys it's a really serious commute so and you know Jeb is just he, he really drives me nuts because he's always smiling at me you know he's always smiling at me like like he must be planning something you know, uh, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if he sabotaged a couple of these ships so that I would look bad, um, you know. So that's uh, that's scary, guys, you know, because uh, he's here all the time. He has full access to everything. So we're about to release here. Release those. They release much nicer. And oh, dear God. Oh, no. See guys, this is my problem. Um, my my real weakness here is is rocket design, and uh, I uh, I forgot to put the linkages between the, uh, the the main rocket and the center rocket. I have just a small rocket there to uh, to push the, uh, the the satellite sort of the, the space station core, the space station extension there out uh, once I get into orbit. And this is just wobbling like crazy. I'm going to have a really, really messed up orbit. And if it doesn't shake itself to pieces, that would be a miracle. Um, so you'll notice I turned down the throttle here quite a bit uh, to try to get into orbit. Um, that will be, if I use this basic design again, I'm going to have to fix that. Um, and I, I think I am, for the most part, going to use this basic design again. So I'll have to find a way to, to, to fix that. Uh, but clearly I'm going to get into orbit without too much trouble because I've still got plenty of fuel left. And I've decided that uh, I just, I'm just i just going to use up as much fuel as I can just getting out into the atmosphere, uh, out, out of the atmosphere, so that, uh, you know, wobbling around like that when I'm in uh, space is probably not great. I don't want all that space junk up there. So uh, I'm going to try to... Uh, to get as circular an orbit as far out as I can. Um, you know, the, the Kerbins actually went out, and I, I think I mentioned this, they might have even mentioned it as well, that, uh, you know, they, they, they took that satellite core that we had, that space station core that we had, and they literally just pulled it out of orbit. Um, they are very sneaky, you guys. Uh, I thought that they were kind of technologically dumb. That is not the case. They, they figured out how to get the satellite... Uh, that, that space station core out of the orbit and put a new one back up there, uh, the original one that I had. So uh, I think maybe they're just kind of like savants. Once they see you do something, they know how to do it. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's weird that they knew how to do that, guys, right? Like, I mean, they, they've asked me to be Kerbal Commander, but if they know how to do it, why are they having me do it? There's something else going on. I don't know what it is, but, um, you know... Uh, so, so you can see here, I'm trying to get my orbit sort of pushed out pretty far, so that I've got plenty of time to uh, to get into a circular orbit here. Um, 
I'm just trying to use up all this fuel. Now, the other thing they did, if you remember from the last video, we got out to about maybe 200,000 or something like that for our satellite core. Our, our space date. Why do I keep saying satellite? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess technically it is a satellite, but uh, it's like a, it's a space station. That's what it is, Andy. It's a space station. Maybe that's why they want to replace you with Jeb, because you can't keep satellite and space station separate. So... You can see here, the other thing I like about this top stage, I tested this top stage very carefully. There's very, there's no wobble up here at all. So this is very stable. My last design, uh, the, the Kerbals criticized me very heavily for my last uh, sat space station core design, which uh, was extremely wobbly. Um, it was wobbling all over the place, and uh, basically you would touch the RCS, and the RCS would just go crazy trying to realign it because it was wobbling so much. This is actually much more solid. So you see there, it stopped using the RCS pretty quickly. So now I want to get up to the top of my orbit here. Um, actually, no, I don't. Uh, I'm going to try to push it out a little bit more while we're at this point so that I don't uh, hit my apoapsis. Um, I think I, I skipped over a point earlier. Uh, when, they, when the Kerbins pulled my old uh, satellite core... Oh, satellite core. I'm just going to call it a satellite core. It's a satellite core now. That's what it is. Uh, my satellite core out of orbit. What they actually did was they put the new one out in actually a higher orbit. So the old one was around 200, 250,000, somewhere in there. This one is actually at 350,000, which is much higher. It'll take a little more fuel to get out there, but I think maybe they're, uh, they're right about that. That's a good place to be. So you can see that my... Uh, because of all that wobbling, my orbit is really screwed up, um, and I'm going to have to fix that at some point. But um, I'm trying to push it out as close to the, uh, the end of that as I can. I get out about to about 352,000, which is really close to where the, the satellite actually is at that point. And I'm going to just maneuver it from here because uh, I need to, to get that out there. And you can see in my uh, resources panel that I still have quite a bit of fuel. Uh, this top stage was actually, I think, reasonably well designed. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't get any pats on the back from the Kerbal High Command. Uh, they didn't uh, stop by my, my desk and say, hey, good job. I mean, they would have said something like, wah, 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 wah. something like that. I mean, it's a crazy duck language. I don't know what's up with it. I mean, you know, uh, and, and you know you know what? That's not fair. I shouldn't say that uh, because they're, they're good people. Um, and uh, they, they, they work hard, they just don't quite understand the technology that they are uh, working with. I mean, I think. Um, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if maybe this is sort of like Ender's Game, where it sort of looks like, you know, because I control it just from this screen. Like, you guys can see this. I'm not, you know, there's, there's no magic behind the curtains. I'm just doing my thing. And, uh, you know, Kerbin is lovely, but... You know, after this, I, I think I'm just going to fly back home to Earth and just, you know, just do all this from Earth because, uh, you know, the food here is terrible, by the way. Uh, nobody tells you that in the brochure. They never say, oh, well, the Kerbal food is just awful. Uh, but it's like it's like a lot of bugs and worms and, you know. They, I, and they, it, the, the crazy thing is, guys, they have cows. There are cows on this planet, and they won't eat them. I mean, I guess I respect their culture, but come on, guys. Let me let me fry you up a steak, and then we'll see what happens. Um, you know, they have this they have this one animal that kind of looks like a chicken. It's it's not a chicken though, uh, and I they they will eat that. But you, if you're ever here, guys, just don't eat the thing that looks like a chicken. Um, they call it uh, what do they call it? It's like, I mean, it's it's weird, right? Like. Uh, you know the, the 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 names they have for things are in their their language, and I don't I don't really get it. But you can see I got a circular orbit here, um, and I have to set my target here as the satellite satellite core. Now the problem is that the uh, the the booster that I used to get that into orbit is actually in the way. So um, so now I have to uh, orient my orbit in the same direction that that's going. So I do that. 
with a maneuver on the descending node. That's where you're gonna have. That's where you're actually sort of crossing paths with the uh, with the guy. So you're trying to set that up. I got to negative point one in one try. That's good. And now we're at zero point zero. So when I get to that point, I'm going to uh, to change my uh, my orbit. Just twist it a little bit. Um, and that's something I love about the maneuver system. I might have talked about this before, but this maneuver system really makes that easy. Like, you know, getting into orbit, you know, you can figure that out without the maneuver uh, system. But uh, sort of twisting your orbit, knowing which direction to point in and how long to burn and watching it like a hawk, that's tough. You know, it's, it's not easy at all. So this maneuver system is great for figuring all that stuff out and how to match up your orbit. Because, again, you know, if I didn't, if I couldn't do that, I would never, ever get within range of this. So... So we're going to twist our orbit, and then uh, I think I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. So you can see I'm burning, I'm burning. I'm actually have to burning quite a bit because I screwed up so much on that first stage. Boom, good. Um, yeah. And I missed turning that off, but that's okay. Uh, now, I'm skipping way ahead here, so I'm now just catching up to Kerberos 2. Now it's just a matter of kind of waiting and adjusting things slightly. But now, now we're as close as we're going to get. So here's what we have to do. Now, this is a technique that I have been practicing quite a bit lately. Uh, basically, you can see my, my speed there says target. Now, that's the difference between how fast I'm moving and how fast the target is moving. So I have to get that to zero, as close to zero as I can, so that I am sort of moving at the same speed as the target. And then what I have to do is I just have to point at it directly. Just point at it and burn. Now here's the trick. As he moves, he's always moving in one direction. You know, like that band. You know, the band that's always moving in one direction. I assume that's their gimmick, that they're always moving in the same direction, which which would be kind of a inefficient way to do things, you know, because if they're moving to America from London, if they want to go back to London, they got to go all the way around the planet. That's nuts. Why would they do that? That's a dumb idea for a band. Like, they could do so many more shows in London if they would do that, if they would just turn around. But anyways, so I got to burn towards him. Now, here's the thing. He's already moving in a different direction. So he's moving sort of, uh, you know, in his orbital direction. So I'm also moving in my orbital direction. And as I push towards him, I'm actually, he's actually going to move faster in his other direction. Uh, so that is a problem. So what you do is, I'm sort of speeding up time here a little bit. As we're moving, notice my nav ball here. My, uh, my prograde is actually sort of moving off to the side from the actual direction of the, uh, the object. So I'm going to fly right past him if I'm not careful. So what you do, and I'm sure I'll do this here in a second, and I've learned this from other people, um... And I, I can't remember. I mean, Scott Manley has great videos. Uh, I wish he would sort of slow down a little bit and, uh, um, you know, sort of show me a little bit more of what he's doing because uh, I really want to learn how to do the things that he does. Um, but what you do is you uh, you push towards the, uh, the, uh, the target, and then you turn around and you come to a dead stop. Okay? And then... You turn back around and you burn back towards the thing. So that's what I'm doing now. You can see I'm I'm turning around. I'm going to slow down and come to a dead stop. And that way I'll be closer, but I'll also be now moving in the same direction at the same speed as this guy. So as you do that, what will happen is your orbit will eventually come to the exact same, uh, just sort of line up exactly, which is much you know, a much easier way to do it than really any other way to do it. I've heard people call this washing their speed. I don't know if that's if that's the same term or if I'm thinking of something different. So the other thing I'm kind of proud of about this particular rocket is notice how much fuel I still have left. Uh, liquid fuel, I mean. Monopropellant, uh, we're going to use up a lot of that trying to get into uh, into place here. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm down to lower, less than a, a kilometer here. And now I have to start being really careful because I've really got to get this uh, get this right because the Kerbal High Command is gonna 
You know, they're going to replace me with Jeb. And I don't know if he knows how to do this, to be honest. I mean, I know he thinks he knows. And he, but you can't read him. I mean, he's always got that smile on his face. Um, you know what? Oh, guys, I just had a great idea. What if I make Jeb the commander of the space station? Yeah, I could put him up there on the space station. And then everybody else can just, like, do whatever they want down here. And he can sort of feel like he's sort of important and on the space station and doing stuff on the space station. He can smile at the instruments. But he won't actually have any power. He can't, they can't replace me with him if he's up on the space station. Oh, that's awesome. I'll just, I'll just send him up, you know, and, and, and frankly, like, total, full credit to Jeb. He is an amazing pilot. Like, oh, he's so good, you guys. You would not believe how good Jeb is. Um, it's it's nuts how good he is. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want him to take my job. Now, granted, you know, those last couple missions have been a total embarrassment, and I will take full responsibility. Um, I mean, except for the parts that Jeb probably sabotaged, which, I mean, definitely happened. But, um, you know... It's uh, it's tough. I, I I need time. You know, I can't just have a couple missions go bad and then lose. I mean, you know, bad things happen to NASA as well. You know, I would be doing this for NASA if they would, you know, not be so finicky about people jumping the fence. You know, you guys, you guys would not believe how mean NASA's lawyers are. It's uh, you know, you jump one fence, you uh, you just want to touch the space shuttle one time. And uh, they're, you know, they're mad, and they keep telling me it's for your own good, and it's kind of, uh, you know what, I'm not going to talk about NASA, I'm technically under, a, you know, a gag order anyways, so I'm not going to talk about that, but, um, so now we're under uh, 500 kilometers, uh, things are going really well so far, you guys, I think, um, there's no way the Kerbal High Command could look at this mission and say, hey, he doesn't know what he's doing, or anything like that. I mean, maybe they could, but, uh, you know, you guys would back me up, right? I'm sure you guys would back me up. So, we're still sort of washing our speed back and forth. Notice that my, uh, I'm still sort of moving past the, uh, the guy. So I'm actually using my RCS here to kind of slow down to nothing and then speed up. I'm not using my, uh, my main booster, my, my liquid fuel anymore because, uh, that will be a problem. Uh, that's just too powerful for what we're doing. I don't want to be moving, you know, 20 meters per second when I'm 400 kilometers away. 400 meters away, I should say. If I was 400 kilometers away, I would definitely use my liquid fuel. Oh, but there I go. I'm using my liquid fuel. I lied. Again, this is post-commentary. Uh, so let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. All right, so we're down to about 164, and I'm, I'm slowing way down. Um, and I think I'm yeah I'm using my liquid fuel here because I am down on mono propellant I'm really low on mono propellant and uh, if I if I use up all that it's just I'm screwed I'm totally screwed uh, if I use up all my mono propellant so I turn off the uh, uh, interface for a second here so. As we're looking at this here, you can see that uh, we're sort of slowly moving closer and closer. We're still not quite perfect orbit-wise, but once we get closer here, we'll be able to slow down to nothing, and we'll basically be in a stationary orbit with the... Uh, we'll be in a locked orbit with Kerberos 2 here. Uh, the ship I'm on here is actually Kerberos 3A, uh, which is good. I like Kerberos 3A. Uh, we had Kerberos 3, and that one did not go well. Uh, so I named it Kerberos 3A because technically it is the third Kerberos. But I use sort of uh, uh, Star Trek uh, naming conventions here. You know, they had the Enterprise and then the Enterprise A and then the B and the C, which you never really saw, uh, and then the D and then the E. Um, and who knows how many more. Uh, that Maybe there was, a, you know, a Q at some point. See, I threw another reference in there for, for you sharp-eyed viewers. I mean, of course, the Kerbins don't get uh, the... Uh, Star Trek references. They never got Star Trek up here. Um, you know, I thought maybe that was the thing that would make them want to go into space if they had seen Star Trek. Um, I was hoping it would be, I was hoping that the, this would sort of be more like Galaxy Quest where uh, they would treat me as a god, but no, they've never seen Star Trek. It's, uh, it sucks. Um, so we're about 46 kilometers, 46 meters away, and I am ready to set my target as that docking port. 
that resets my target for that specific point so that uh, I can use all of my instruments here. My nav ball will show that as the, uh, the target. So, yeah. So, we're getting close, guys. And I really, really, I cannot express to you how much, how I need this, to, how well I need this to go. Uh, if this goes badly, uh, it could be, it could be really bad. So, I'm using my, uh, I'm switching over here. And I'm going to turn my uh, space station here around so that it's pointing at the uh, at the, the ship here. And the way I'm going to do this, the way I'm going to set this up is I am going to point this, point that one docking port directly at my, uh, my space station core as it stands right now. So um, you can see here that... Uh, I'm actually going to point it at a degree marker, which uh, is zero degrees. And then, for the other one, I'm actually going to... I'm already sort of pointed in that direction. I'm at 270 right now. Maybe I was at 90 degrees there. I couldn't really... I'm looking at this in a very tiny window in Premiere, so it's a, kind of hard to see what that says. But um, basically, I'm going to keep my RCS on. I'm going to turn my chase camera on. I'm going to control from that port, which is pointless because I'm already controlling from that section because um, my, my uh, satellite uh, uh, remote control there is there. So I just need to get that pink target icon in the center of my, uh, my view there and also get my, um, my uh, green prograde in the same position. Um, now, if I can do that, I can just sort of move, I'll be moving forward and eventually I will, I will snap on, which is good. And then the, the docking procedure will take place and then everything will be okay. So I've got my pink sort of in the center. Now I'm moving forward. You don't want to move forward too fast. I mean, I'm moving, you know, I'm sort of slowing down and pushing forward here and trying to stay in, in position here. This is very tense. Luckily, I'm doing this commentary after the fact so that I don't have to have to do this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to blame some of my poor play earlier on the fact that I uh, I was uh, trying to comment and to play the game at the same time, which is not a great idea. Um, so you can see my, uh, my view here is getting a little off. I'm using... Um, I'm using sort of the directional thruster, the directional RCS instead of the sort of rotational RCS to uh, get into get into position here. So that's pretty good. We're about 38 meters away. We're getting closer. I'm moving about one meter a second. So we're about 30 seconds away. Um, I just got to sort of stay on track here. Very close. Sort of moving off target here. I need to stay pointed directly at that center point. Um, and I'm a little worried about that I'm sort of rotating a little bit. Um, but it's going to happen here in just a second. And when I'm looking at it from this angle, I can't see how close I am. But it shouldn't matter because there we go. Okay, we're connected. We're connected. Turn off the RCS so it doesn't shake itself to pieces. And there you go. Now it's rotating kind of strangely right now, which I'm going to find out uh, the issue at this point. So I've got a good amount of monopropellant. Now I'm trying to move it around, and it's not really moving. Um, what you're actually going to be seeing here is the big mistake I made. Um, and you can kind of see it now. It's wobbling around a lot. Um, I really screwed this up, guys. So if you look right at that connection there, you'll see I've got a steel girder, my satellite core, and then another steel girder. I'm basically using a satellite core as the entire link for my entire space station. Um, it's all connected right there. Look at how much that's flexing. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad, you guys. Um, so, yeah, I really screwed this one up. Uh, I'm really hoping Kerbal High Command doesn't hear about this, uh, or if they do, 
Maybe I can uh, do something else. I'm trying to move the fuel uh, into the, the main station here to sort of balance things out a little bit. Maybe. I'm hoping that will work. Um, I'm trying to actually find the fuel tank. Um, you know, sort of move some of that fuel out so that it's maybe a little more balanced. But uh, the real problem is that uh, a satellite core is not an appropriate way to link your two uh, space station pieces together. Uh, and that's basically the, the main thing put together there. So I really screwed this up. Uh, so I'm really sorry about screwing that up, you guys. Uh, I know I've been talking this whole time about how I'm going to do better. Um, but I, this is a small victory here. Uh, my top stage was pretty good until I got to the actual, uh, I got to the actual space station core. So, uh, what I think I'm gonna do, what I think I'm gonna do, is I'm going to uh, reset all of this. I'm gonna use the sort of main core that I just put up today, and I'm gonna remove the extra satellite, the original satellite core, Kerberos Two. Uh, and I'm going to keep Kerberos 3A and add a Kerberos 4 that is slightly redesigned to have a better linkage there because there's no way that linkage is going to work. It's never going to stay active there. Um, so I, it doesn't matter which where I control it from. It's just, it's just too unbalanced. Um, even if I had one on the other side, I don't know if that would help. Um, I might give that a shot. Uh, but... Yeah, so uh, every time I touch the RCS, it uh, flexes wildly, um, and I don't dare turn on the... Uh, so I'm trying to disable some RCS ports here, hoping that maybe it won't uh, it won't uh, work so heavily. But um, I think what I'm going to do is that original satellite core that I had, uh, I'm just going to dump that one. Uh, Kerberos 2 is going to go away, and I'm going to use my current uh, setup here Kerberos 3A as the new core of the space station, and uh, hopefully Kerberos Kerber High Command will approve of that uh, plan. Because uh, if they don't, uh, the next mission is going to be hosted by Jeb, and uh, he's going to you know use his duck language to tell you about what's going on in Kerbal Space Program. Um, yeah, I mean, look at how much flex that has. That. It's a miracle that that hasn't all broken into pieces, um, and it's going to at any time now if I'm not careful. So, um, yeah, oof, that is rough. Again, I'm disabling RCS ports here so that uh, hopefully I won't uh, won't have a a problem with this thing tearing itself to pieces. But uh, yeah, yeah, guys, it. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty bad, actually. It's pretty bad. So, let's get out of here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm Andy, and I'm going to come back to Earth and control the game from there from now on. Um, and uh, hopefully, Kerberon High Command will appreciate that. I'm going to throw out my, uh, uh, my other rocket engine there, which uh, I don't really need because this isn't going anywhere. But... Uh, Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.